All right, guys, we'll do one more. Jeez, relax. Oh, wow. That was a lot louder. Hey everyone, welcome back to the NFA Review Channel. Hope everyone out there had a great Thanksgiving with their family. I spent mine with my second family at the fire department. Had a pretty busy day, but fun nonetheless. So today we are gonna be looking at the evolution of suppressors, specifically 22 suppressors over the last decade. We're about to end a decade. We're about to go into the Roaring 20s part two. So I figured this would be a cool time to check out what has been happening with the technology and firearm suppressors. This suppressor in my hands right here, the AWC Archangel T, T for titanium, was my first suppressor that I ever bought. So I ended up buying the suppressor in 2008-ish, uh, I wanna say, probably around the end of 2008, early 2009. I believe it took an entire year for the paperwork to come back back then. I ended up buying this full price from my local dealer because back then there weren't a plethora of dealers that there are today. Suppressors weren't as mainstream as they are now. Before we dive into the differences between old technology versus current technology, just want to give a huge thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. We hit the 200 uh, patron goal. We are going to have a private Patreon only shooting event on February 22nd, 2020. And as of today, we just signed up two more companies under Pro Deals. So we have an entire laundry list of pro deals uh, from 7% off all the way up to 50% off, uh, specifically on suppressors, namely 50% off all CGS group suppressors, which is pretty awesome. So sit tight. Let's go ahead and dive in to the AWC Archangel Titanium. Archangel Titanium comes in in an overall length of 5.7 inches and a diameter of 0.95 inches with a weight of 3.4 ounces. And it is constructed of 100% titanium. I don't know the grade, probably grade 9 titanium. Has a half by 28 threads in the back, of course. And I remember when I bought this, it had different finish options. Uh, you could do black, polished titanium tube, or bead blasted and I originally got the bead blasted look and, and I ended up just hitting it with some high temp spray paint back then and it's actually held up pretty well. You can actually see the factory finish here on the end of the, of the can. Um, now the retail price and I remember when we started today's video I told you I paid full retail for this can. So somewhere in 08 or 09 I paid $550 for this can and then waited 12 months to take it home. Now, if you're new to suppressors and you're going through that tax stamp wait for your first can, I know exactly what you're going through. I went through it. It was like Christmas day. I remember everything. I remember driving there in my truck. I got the call from the dealer. I stopped whatever I was doing, drove straight there, got it. And I remember I just left it in the cup holder and then at every single light I would pick it up. You know, ooh, my first suppressor. So I know what you're going through out there. Uh, the bug definitely bit me hard. Uh, shortly after this can, I started to purchase some. I think my next can was an AAC uh, M4 2000 uh, Mod 08 for my rifle can. I still have it on my Noveski with a machine gun lower on it now. That can has, no joke, probably 70 to 80,000 rounds through it. It's completely shot to hell. There's baffle strikes in it, end cap strikes in it. It still works. I'm never going to fix it. I like the way it looks now. While we're on that subject, I kind of just started reviewing cans for fun. Uh, if you go back on my YouTube channel, way back, that, my YouTube channel's been active for quite a while. Uh, I have some pretty embarrassing videos on there. If you actually go to my channel, um, youtube.com slash NFA Review Channel USA, and then go to videos, and you can scroll the first video that I uploaded. Go back a couple months and you'll see probably when I reviewed this. I, I don't remember, but I know I reviewed it. A crappy camera but my thing was to always have a succinct format that you guys could follow along every single time. And that formula is the same one I use today with just better audio recording equipment and better cameras. Kind of just snowballed into a business model. Now I turn my hobby into business, which uh, is a blessing and a curse at the same time. But back on topic, the AWC uh, Archangel Titanium is no longer made. 
Uh, I couldn't find it anywhere on the website. It took me a while to find the specs on an old website. Uh, now, this is a sealed suppressor. See, back then, everybody said, you don't have to clean suppressors because why would you clean a muffler? Do you clean the muffler on your car or your truck? No. Mm, wrong. So luckily, as technology advanced and the manufacturers got around loopholes that the ATF had set in place as far as modularity and taking apart things, uh, the suppressors were able to evolve. Uh, I actually was lucky enough to buy this kind of at the paradigm shift of suppressors. Around 2009, 2010 is when everything kind of shifted and they started to get more popular. Magazines were starting to do more articles on them. People were talking about them more. There was a new thing called trusts that people started yapping about. I think I paid 200 bucks back then to get mine done. I started to put these videos on YouTube uh, to show the difference in what it can do for a shooter, especially a novice shooter, uh, introducing somebody to our sport of shooting um, and how it aids in recoil reduction, flash reduction, uh, sound signature, stuff like that. So that's how that took off. Back then, uh, there was this thing called the dip. Now, all my viewers out there that have searched silencertalk.com, it's an old form. It's actually still in use today. Uh, you can probably find my old post on there under my handle, Fireman1291. There was a dip that you can make. It was called the dip with hydrogen peroxide and ammonia, I believe it was. I don't use it anymore. It's very, very toxic. When you insert an, a can into this, it reacts with the lead in there, creating lead acetate. It has a chemical reaction of those two chemicals with the lead in the can and sloughs it all off. The issue is, yes, it does clean your can, but you're left with this toxic, way, I mean highly toxic, respirator, chemical gloves, and then you have to go to a hazmat facility to dump it. It was a real pain in the ass. I only did it like one or two times. Uh, so this can is, I can just see it now, the first blast chamber is like coated in just carbon deposits and lead, and it's definitely heavier than it was back then. I want to say later that year, I went to the 2009 silencer shoot by AAC up in Georgia at Red Hill Range, and they had the Sparrow there from Silencer Co. Silencer Co. was a brand new company at the time, they had just come out with the Gen 1 Sparrow. It was actually longer than this, and it used two red aluminum clamshells to keep the lead deposits away from the tube. So that was like the most advanced cleaning at the time was to be able to pull your baffle stack out without the carbon fouling getting caught on there. Because those are other cans that did come apart. They were fairly new, but I would say 95% of the cans on the market were all sealed, all of them. Centerfire, rifles, uh, rimfire, they were all sealed. So this was like leading edge at the time, and it did make cleaning easier. Uh, but you still had to hand scrape the, the clamshells and stuff in there, and then they came out with the Gen 2, which this is. I actually sent in my Gen 1, they converted it, they actually cut the tube down and converted it with the Gen 2 guts, and then things progressed from there. Uh, a couple years later, you have more technology trickling down. Uh, you had some niche cans, such as the smaller cans from ArmTac, you have the, um, actually, all these handguns on the wall, guys. These are all suppressed 22s. It's two integrals, and the rest are all muzzle-mountable cans. You have the uh, Energetic Armament uh, Nix Mod 2. That's a cool can. Um, so as, as things progressed, we went from not cleaning the cans to, yeah, you should clean the cans, to how do we clean the cans, to the new designs. And uh, it was all essentially a single size can where you could remove the front cap and slide out the baffles and then clean them. And then we ran into the problem of, well, if they're aluminum, we can't put them in an ultrasonic cleaner because of the cavitation of the metal. So now we can either A, make it out of stainless, which makes the can extremely heavy, exhibit A, or we can clean it by hand, which kind of sucks and negates the whole purpose of having an easily maintained suppressor. So then, a couple years after that, um, and I forget who did it first, but the can that I have that was my first modular 22 can was the Rugged Suppressors Oculus 22. Here it is on a, P, on a PPKS 22 clone uh, in the short configuration. So then they said, okay, well, let's do stainless steel internals, stainless steel tube, 
but to negate the weight, let's make our suppressors modular. So give the customer the option to have a full length tube or take it down by unscrewing the front module and moving your front cap back. Now you're gonna have less baffles, less weight, a little bit more sound, but the Pro is less weight, uh, better handability in your hand, and it just looks a lot cooler. So that's kind of where we went for a while. CGS came out with some cool heat treat stainless steel stuff. Uh, the Mask 22, one of my all time favorite 22 cans. The tone on that is wonderful. The baffles come apart great, uh, which is my next topic. You have ba like just baffles, like K baffles that have uh, where the gas goes through the tube. And as it slows down, the gas will deposit the, the lead and the carbon on the tube wall, okay? So that was like the first rendition of taking apart cans. That became a problem because then you couldn't get them out, hence the clamshells on the Sparrow. So then companies started to come out with encapsulated baffles, the Siren 22 from CGS Group. Uh, it does have a baffle stack, but as the stack is built, it creates a secondary outer wall so you don't get any of that leakage onto the tube wall. So you can easily slide the baffles out and you don't need to hammer it out with a wooden dowel. The Mass 22 has the same feature there as well. Uh, all the baffles make their own kind of outer shell tube and then you slide it into that one. Uh, they're also stainless steel so you can throw all the guts into an ultrasonic cleaner and makes cleaning a lot easier. So there's something else you'll notice here and I just kind of noticed it as we're talking. The sizes have all gotten shorter and a little bit wider diameter. This is 0.95 inches. All of these cans are just over an inch in diameter. All of them are shorter. So what do we have here? We have suppressors that we can now take apart. We have suppressors, some of them, that are modular so you can change the length. And we have suppressors that are shorter, a little bit girthier, and that are most likely a lot quieter and by companies that are still around servicing them. This can, again, is no longer made. AWC is around, yes, but they are no longer a leader in performance. Uh, back then, we didn't have a lot of options, as we do now. Now you have a plethora of options. It's almost utterly insane, and uh, hopefully channels like mine help you guys come up with uh, the right purchase decision for yourself on all those options out there. So right here we have the Siren 22, brand new in the box. It feels like it's empty because it's so light. So I wanted to show you kind of old tech versus new tech. Oh my God, this feels like it's a prop, like a SHOT Show fake can. That's how light it is. So again, we have the Archangel coming in at 5.7 inches against the Siren 22 at 5.25 inches. Remember how I said they're a little wider? So we have 0.95 inches on the Archangel versus the Siren's uh, 1.06, so not that much wider. And then you have the weight of the Archangel, which was really light for the time, all titanium, of 3.4 ounces, versus the Siren's 2.2 ounce weight. And then you have the materials. 100% titanium for the Archangel, versus a lot of cool stuff in the Siren. So you have a uh, 7075 rear, 7075 T6 aluminum front. You have a pressed 17.4 uh, um, heat treated threads. And then you have a carbon fiber tube. And then the baffles are all 7075 uh, T6 with the type three hard coat anodizing. So then you have the prices. So here's our next topic is a lot of people complain about the price of cans. Uh, can prices have actually gone down over the years and options have increased exponentially as you can see. 550 retail. I paid retail because back then you were, there were no sales, you had no options. 399 retail. I'll perform this head over heels and for my patrons on Patreon they get half off so they only pay 199. Carbon fiber, stainless steel, aluminum, 199. I'll perform this titanium, $550. And these are the two cans. We're going to be putting head to head against each other out on the range. So let's grab some, some host. We're going to shoot the same exact ammo on the same exact host. And we're going to see how these compare at the range. Obviously, we're not going to show cleaning them when we get home because you can't clean this anymore. So let's go ahead and get to the range. Okay, so just got out to the range. Uh, <laughs> these damn heifers behind me. 
Oh, will not leave me alone. I'm trying to get the camera set up to film, and uh, I've already done a couple burn pops to try to scare him away, and uh, <laughs> they're, they're dead set on uh, making, a, making a cameo here today. But uh, before we get started today, just want to let you guys know uh, there were a couple orders through CGS Group, through Patreon for the half-off deal. Those apply to suppressors only. Some of you tried to buy their $4,000 plus custom rifles. Uh, that would put them in the poorhouse. Uh, but instead of just saying no discounts on the rifles, Bobby actually said, you know what? For all gold members on Patreon, we'll do 20% off. So 20% off all the rifles, 50% off all their suppressors on top of all the other pro deals we have. So if you want to check that out, it's patreon.com slash NFA review. I uh, just figured we go ahead and touch base on that since we had a conversation in the truck on the way here. So I'm going to go ahead and just get set up and we'll start shooting. Hopefully they'll leave us alone. Not bad. At least with earmuffs on. All right, head to head the CGS Group Siren 22 with CCI standard velocity and the Walther PPKS 22 with the same hope, same ammo, and the AWC Archangel Titanium, my very first suppressor. Be fucky. Oh, yeah, look at that. Movie mode. I'm going to shoot this one closer to the microphone first. We're going to load up another two mags and then we'll, we'll switch hands just to make it perfectly fair. He's probably going to get a lot of port pop on me. Definitely louder. Second shot was almost the same. I just come pretty close after the first round pop. Yeah. After the first round pop, it's uh, it's pretty close, at least to my ears. My ears are pretty screwed up, but it is what it is. Let's switch hands. Okay, I totally forgot these are 10-round magazines, so now they're both full. Let's go ahead and see how they do. Archangel first. Definitely louder, first round pop. both at the same time. The tone's pretty close. Let's do that again. Yeah. I don't know what it is about 22s, specifically the PPK in general. That was just fun. All right, let's try a pistol with a barrel that's a little longer than the PPK. So we have two of the kind of the mark series here this is a 2245 this is a 2245 as well with an aftermarket bulk quartz and frame on it but same length barrel everything else is exactly the same so uh same ammo let's see how they sound with a tad bit longer burn time on the powder this is like stupid light this thing I forgot how light this trigger is. That was really quiet. Wow. Okay. Again, I had earmuffs on for this, but uh, I could tell that was quieter already. God, that triggers light. Okie dokie. Again, a little first round pop, but other than that, pretty, pretty quiet little can for its age. 
All right, running low on the CCI ammo, so we're just gonna do this one take. 10 rounds in each gun. This one is definitely substantially a little heavier than this one, even with the red dot. I mean, it's noticeable. All right. Louder. Archangel's louder there. Mm, close again. Still, uh, that seemed a little louder with the Archangel. Hard to tell. I don't know what it is about 22s, man. So fun. Okay, I ran out of the CCI standard velocity. I brought a couple extra boxes of federal premium uh, match grade ammo. I believe it's 1,200 feet per second, so a little hotter loaded than the CCI standard velocity. So I wanted to run the Siren against itself. I have two. Uh, I think it'd be a cool test to run the host actually against themselves. So the PPKS versus the uh, Ruger Mark IV Lite. So let's see what the extra barrel length does between the two with the hotter ammo. Definitely hotter. Tell. Okay, so sound level is pretty close. This one has more of an air gun sound to it, I want to say, as far as the action noise, probably because of the polymer frame here, like it's kind of paintballish. And the Walter has that nice mechanical metallic sound. My ears actually prefer that metallic sound over this one. So uh, that's a pretty sweet host, you gotta admit. The uh, stainless PPKS, I mean, these are pretty cheap. And then you can throw the Siren tw uh, 22 on there. That's just a, that's a handsome looking firearm there. All right, guys, we'll do one more. Jeez, relax. So we're doing the two different hosts now, head to head. Same hotter federal ammo, Siren and Walter versus the 2245 and the Archangel. Should have 10 rounds loaded in each. Let's see what we got. Didn't reset. Oh wow. That was a lot louder. Uh, you're getting dirty on me now? Is that what's going on? Still prefer the metallic sound of this one. And it edges it out very slightly. I'm sure on a meter, it's more of a noticeable difference. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was uh, certainly fun to get out here and plink with some 22s. That's definitely one of my all-time favorite things to do. Full disclosure, today's video, CGS Group, Bobby with CGS Group did not know I was doing this head-to-head. -head. Um, this is just something I've wanted to do for a while. Uh, my pick of the litter would have been the mask, the Oculus 22, or this suppressor. And I've been on a carbon fiber kick lately, so this thing's pretty sweet. Um, so what we got, shorter, slightly fatter, serviceable, cheaper, and quieter. Uh, no first round pop on this, which is pretty hard to do on a 22 can. Uh, this one, noticeable first round pop, and then it, it quieted down pretty good. I have to say, I haven't shot this can in, no joke, probably six to seven years. 
So all my old cans that I have on my truss, they just kind of, I unscrewed them all. They're just piled up in the back confines of my safe. They don't ever see the light of day really. Um, but you know, this is, it still sounds good. It's just, you know, you don't want to use it a lot because it fills up and it's toxic to clean it like I mentioned in the studio. So uh, I hope it was an enjoyable video to watch. If this is something you guys want to see more, you know, aside from reviews on new products coming out, which we're going to have a lot coming up here around SHOT Show, uh, this is the slow time of year, kind of before SHOT Show when everybody's gearing up uh, and they're gearing up for their new product releases. So hopefully first of 2020, we'll have some new reviews for you coming out shortly. Uh, but as far as head-to-heads and other off-topic videos, you guys got to let me know in the comments below. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Let me know what else you want to see. I got a safe full of toys we can uh, we can do this all day for you guys so i'm here for you you know this is my passion that i somehow turn into a business and it's fun you guys have been growing along with us i appreciate all the support all the subscribers and those of you on patreon specifically you guys basically help run the operating cost of this channel so uh, give yourselves a pat on the back for sure uh, speaking of which we're going to have the patreon only private close to the public shooting event uh, february 22nd so make sure to check out uh, Patreon if that's something that you guys want to come to. Uh, other than that, I have nothing else today. Make sure to click that like and subscribe button because we have a lot more videos coming. See ya.